Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, I just want to have a few questions about variable pricing. If, if I'm understanding it correctly, you, you want the flexibility to be able to reduce the markup on, on your product, correct? And, and in theory, that means you're going to increase sales uh, and increase revenue by reducing the markup. Can you explain how you're going to accomplish that? It really, it really comes down to the elasticity of pricing depending on the product. If you're a connoisseur of fine scotch, the price doesn't matter that much to you. For someone um, that is buying a $10, 1.5 milliliter bottle of wine, price matters a lot. They shop the price. So we would be working in both directions depending on consumer's behavior towards those type of products. But the idea that you're going to reduce the markup on that lower price means you're going to have to increase volume in order to make money, correct? Make more money to increase revenue, correct? You're going to need to increase the volume. If you're going to reduce the markup and you're going to make more money, clearly you have to increase your volume, correct? That would be part of the equation, yes. And where is that additional volume coming from? It, at the $10 to $15 price range in wine, people trade out brand names. They don't, they, they, sh they shop on price. When something's on promotion now, they'll buy that brand this month. The next month, they'll buy the other brand on, pr on promotion. That's consumer behavior that, that we see all the time and measure. We don't see volume increasing necessarily on those products. They're going to shop depending on what's on promotion that month. Where we see the opportunities here is to get better pricing from suppliers, which increases that margin. You're the largest purchaser of alcohol in the world, correct? How are you going to negotiate a better price than you already have? Okay, sorry, the third largest producer of alcohol in the world. How in the world are you going to negotiate a better price than you're already negotiating? Because it's, it's fixed right now. We, have to, we do the markup, which is the uh, uniform markup. Okay, and so I, I do think what I'm hearing also is that you want the flexibility to increase the markup higher than it already is, correct? In thus increasing price on more expensive bottles, correct? It, it could be a combination of increasing price and also lowering cost. Well, I didn't hear the, uh, the flexible pricing. I didn't hear the lowering of cost. I, I, I clearly heard the desire to increase the price, which from my constituent standpoint, whether they're buying a $100 bottle of wine or a $10 bottle of wine, the, the price is, has continued to be a frustration, but we will move on from there because clearly... Some prices go up, some prices go down. That's the answer to the question. Thank some you, Mr. Marcus. I, I, I got the gentleman, gentleman's answer. I do, have sure a question. Understood that. I do have a question for you, though, Mr. Marcus. About r Roughly about 12 months ago, you and I had a spirited debate about table leaf, and you were a, a strong defender of table leaf. We talked about the millions of dollars that the taxpayers of Pennsylvania were... were we're investing in, in, in advertising for a Pennsylvania vineyard wine that's... Millions a, of dollars? We yes. We're talking about millions of dollars in, in, in investing in table leaf. Uh, okay, we could, the, just for the committees and for the folks at home, the, the table leaf acquisition and the, and the advertising specifically to table leaf, how much has it, has it cost uh, since that, that uh, business decision was made? One that you said 12 months ago that you were very proud of. Well, I'm, I'm still proud of it. You know, it's the, the table leaf uh, has made uh, significant money. How much, how much did that acquisition cost, and how much have we spent on advertising for that particular brand that okay. was a California-based well, vineyard? Let me first start off by saying that the um, sales volume has been $12 million for that pro those uh, table leaf products. The sales volume. I'm sorry, I was on the expense the, the side of the legislature, not well, the revenue side. Well, the sales amount, okay, it was approximately $12 million. Okay. As a uh, sales quantity of 1,312,000 bottles. The board spent uh, approximately $173,000 on advertising, and because we wanted to license and register the name, we did spend 238000 in legal fees because we had plans to take this uh, a lot of different directions. But, I, you know, I remember, and so we, we made a lot of money on Table Leaf and we'll continue to make Mr. it Chairman, as we sell could the gentleman, it out. Mr. Chairman, could the gentleman just answer my question? I asked what how much the they've spent 
on the table. I just lease. answered that. No, you, one Didn't part I of that. Didn't I just say 238,000 in, in legal fees and 100 and um, a hundred and seventy-three thousand dollars in uh, advertising. And how much was the product, Mr. Marcus? How much did the product cost to buy? Well, we didn't, I'm sure that's not all we spent for the table leaf well, product our, to put it on the shelf. On the, on the twelve million in uh, sales amount, we would have made uh, we make a little bit about thirty-three percent. Is that correct? on that uh, so you know we're talking about four million dollars net profit does that include the tax it's not that revenue tax. so now we have to add 24 percent onto the 12 million and uh, so we'd be uh, back up uh, four million we made about eight million dollars on that and that's why <laughs> we just, that's we just throw eight million okay is that well, okay that eight million on about five hundred thousand well, mr marcus I, I understand you like to count taxes as sales, but with all due respect, taxes are taxes and, and revenue and profit are, are a separate category. We're glad if, you earned that. I know that you've been a, a proud supporter of Table Leaf. Uh, can you comment on the decision to, uh, uh, to drop that business venture? We that listened to you last year and others, and we're, we're not going to fight you on it. What are we supposed to do? If you don't want us to do it, um, we got enough things to uh, be concerned about. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to be responsive to the legislature. Um, do I think we should do it? Um, not necessarily, I don't think we should get out of it, but it's, it's a board decision and I'm, I'm okay with it. We're, we'll make money selling it out. We're in good shape on that. And, and Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may have one answer, to, Mr. Representative Mustio had asked a question. I just want to make sure I heard it correctly. As far as it relates, you don't have a um, a percentage of your profit that is that that you can identify as to going towards operation cost and personnel cost. Is that correct? You don't know what percentage of your profit goes to personnel cost. I thought the the question was, Representative. The what was it for benefits for personnel costs, well, not just personnel costs? I guess I was looking at salaries, benefit, and pension costs. What what that that yeah. cost, how much is represented of, the, uh, of your profit margin goes to pay that? Representative, I don't have that number, but I'd like, can I share one number with you that's fairly similar to that? We went back 10 years and looked at operating expense as a percent of gross sales. In fiscal year 2003 and four, it was 21.8 percent of our of our uh, gross sales was operating expense, which includes wages, benefits, and all that. This past fiscal year, it dropped to 17.8 percent. That that four percent increase is an 18 percent improvement. And in private industry, they would put facts like that in their annual report. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman.